As a follow-up to my anti-hero countdown, let's consider Heath Ledger's Joker. Ledger sadly died in early 2008 from a prescription drug overdose, but his legacy was honored with a Best Supporting Actor Oscar at the Academy Awards. Ledger's chilling performance elevated The Dark Knight from a strong superhero movie to something very special and gave us one of the most fascinating villains ever to grace the silver screen. Yes, I've finally seen The Dark Knight, and I loved it. There are many actors who are completely recognizable in their roles, including Marlon Brando, Johnny Depp, Tom Cruise, and Keanu Reeves. If you're watching a Jack Nicholson movie, you're conscious of the fact that you're watching Jack Nicholson, whether he's playing an insane author, a mental patient, a womanizer, or, incidentally, the Joker of the Tim Burton series. A good exception would be Philip Seymour Hoffman, who effectively became Truman Capote in the 2005 biopic Capote. The same is true of Heath Ledger, I have never seen an actor immerse himself so deeply in his role and convince us that we are watching his character. His makeup is just the icing on the crazy cake. When you watch The Last Samurai, which is a good movie, by the way, you are watching Tom Cruise playing Tom Cruise playing an American soldier turned samurai. But in The Dark Knight, there is no doubt in your mind that you are watching the Joker at work. The Joker's quirky gestures and gleeful, sociopathic personality complete a wild, unhinged villain who stands, simply put, for anarchy. His entire goal is to spread chaos and hysteria. The Joker treats the murder and mayhem as a wonderful game and Ledger shifts effortlessly from laughing insanity to a grave seriousness. His motivations are refreshingly simple, but his schemes are so elaborate and ingenious that you almost want him to succeed so that he can finish making his point, namely that chaos is fair and that everyone can be corrupted. And the Joker is right in a way, while order rarely observes the rights of every human being, chaos does not discriminate. Chaos will throw the lives of everyone into disarray, and all of us are equal before it. As the Joker and Two-Face assert, chaos is, in many cases, unprejudiced, unbiased, and fair. As for humans being corruptible, I would respond by saying, once again, that nobody is perfect. As humans, we all have the capacity for evil. We all have our little prejudices, vices, and desires that get out of control, and I'm sure that many of us, if pushed over the edge by a horrible injustice, could become an unstable fiend like Two-Face or the Joker. Ultimately, Heath Ledger's Joker embodies evil, chaos, and, in a weird way, his own sense of justice, and has a jolly time bringing it out in everybody. The rest of the film is a little uneven, but still pretty solid. The Dark Knight features a stellar cast, but Christian Bale was, regrettably, the weakest member. I want you off the fucking set, you prick! Hey, settle down. Batman's rasping growl is never intimidating, and Bale is somewhat flat as his billionaire alter ego, Bruce Wayne. Batman may be treading the line between hero and villain in his ruthlessness, but his values as a noble vigilante are vague compared to the Joker's clear pursuit of chaos. Fuck's sake, man, you're amateur. Seriously, man, you and me, we're fucking done professionally. 
Meanwhile, Morgan Freeman brings his trademark authority and benevolence to the role of Wayne's engineer, and Gary Oldman stands out as a weary police chief dedicated to cleaning up the city of Gotham. Maggie Gyllenhaal is fine as Batman's love interest, and veteran actor Michael Caine adds a touch of humor as Wayne's butler, mentor, and close friend. Harvey Dent, played by Aaron Eckhart from Towelhead, becomes another twisted villain toward the third act, but his early role as the White Knight of Gotham seems undeserved. Dent was a persuasive lawyer who put half of the mob behind bars, but, if anything, Oldman was the one who did all the work in finding and arresting the criminals. To be honest, Dent, as a good guy, didn't seem to do much. Dent's fall from grace is given a good explanation, and the vengeful Two-Face is one of the Dark Knight's two interesting villains, but the parallels between White Dent and Dark Batman weren't fleshed out well. The Dark Knight has slick cinematography, and the exhilarating car chase carries a real sense of speed and peril. The fight choreography is a little choppy, but the action is still creative. The Dark Knight is also dark and expertly paced. Even after the Joker is caught, and the action looks ready to simmer down, another clever catastrophe takes you off guard, and the film surges on with a greater conflict and more to lose. The most memorable scene had the Joker in a nurse's smock swaggering away from a hospital as it blew itself to pieces. The horror of the Joker's actions blends perfectly with the absurdity of his makeup and outfit, and these conflicting tones really do sum up the Joker in a nutshell. It would be impossible to judge the Dark Knight without addressing the Joker. As with Sam Neill in Omen 3, Heath Ledger made this movie. Even with an uninteresting Batman and a White Knight comparison that didn't really work for me, The Dark Knight still has thrilling action, sterling performances, good drama, and one of the best portrayals of madness I've ever seen. Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight earns four and a half stars. Thank you for watching. Cheers.